I'm not sure who needs to hear this message, but God wants you to spend time with him. I just need a couple of minutes of your time because I want to explain to you exactly what I mean. First you hear it, then you believe it, then you speak it, now you can see it, now you receive it, now you keep it, then you can increase it. I'm talking about faith. Because the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So see, when you hear that word, you got to believe it. <laughs> you got me? And once you believe it, you start to speak it. And the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Then you can see it. <laughs> so once you speak it, then you see it. Now you can receive it. But what I want to talk to you today about is how you keep it. And then maybe on the next video, we'll talk about how you increase it. But let's talk about keeping it. You see, repetition deepens the impression. Whatever you practice, you become good at. And you have to get good at practicing the word of God, right? Because that's who you are. If you're a baseball player, what you need to do every day? Swing the bat. If you're a basketball player, boy, you need to be shooting at least 250 free throws every day. I'm not talking about making. I'm not, excuse me. I'm not talking about. Oh, uh, shooting 250 shots. I'm talking about making 250 shots. It's the difference. So that may mean a total of 500 shots, right? Because you are practicing the right way. So when it comes to keeping the word, it's just like brushing your teeth every morning. Do you brush your teeth every morning? Oh, my, my bad, man. I forgot you don't brush your teeth every morning. But generally, People brush their teeth every morning and listen, it's not it's not up for negotiation, debate or discussion. That's just something you do every morning because of routine. So why when it comes to the word of God, we don't automatically want to get into it every day and consider it a part of our routine. Why is it up for discussion? Why is it always like, I don't know if I feel like I don't feel like I, I'm tired today. I don't do this. We don't do that when it comes to brushing our teeth. So why we want to do that with God's word? Come on now. God wants you to spend time with him. It's an investment into your spiritual piggy bank. Time spent with God is never time wasted. You got me? So today, I challenge you to get into God's word. You got me? Get into God's word. Because see, watch this. The more words you know, the more dangerous you become to the enemy. And the more truth you know, the more it exposes the lies of the enemy. Let God give you a fresh revelation with his word. And then... Right. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. So feed your heart faith when you don't need it so that your heart can feed your mouth faith to speak when you do need it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Whatever you got in is going to come out. And whenever you go about throughout your day, you want to have word in you so that you can speak to the situations when they when they uh, come about. The Bible says the enemy walks to earth like a roaring lion seeking those who he may devour. So when the enemy look at you, when the enemy trying to creep up on you, when he trying to send them attacks, you got to be able to speak the word of God to the situation and you defeat him. Remember when Jesus fasted 40 days, the enemy came to Jesus. The enemy say, uh, if, if you if you really be the son of God, like, let me see you turn these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? He responded with the word. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. See, he won the battle by speaking the word of God. So if Jesus spoke the word of God, what you think we need to do? That's the format. He did that as an example and an example for me and you in everyday life that when the enemy comes at you, you got to speak the word of God to your situation. Let me tell you how powerful it is in terms of what you say. See, what you speak is called your confession, right? See, your confession is a result of your belief. Your belief is a result of your thinking. Your thinking is a result of your knowledge and your knowledge is a result of your source. And I'm here today to tell you either you're plugged into one of two sources, either God or the devil, uh, either God or the devil. Either faith or fear. Which one are you going to get plugged into? <laughs> get plugged into faith. That stands for forward action and trusting him. And also stands for fear ain't in this house. Look, I can't control who's in the White House, but I can control who's in my house. God's in my house. God's in my truck. Why is that? Because I invited him in. <laughs> the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. <laughs> I sure ain't plugged into fear and neither is you. What fear stands for? false evidence appearing real it also stands for f-e-a-r forget everything and run it also stands for anytime you're feeling fearful f you probably forgetting the goodness of god e you envisioning the worst and not the best a you accepting defeat before the fight are you rejecting god's way of doing it which is standing on his word and choosing to walk by faith and not by sight and trusting more in god's ability to succeed rather than your own inability to fail so forget about the fear <laughs> and look we're gonna view f-e-a-r god's way 
That stands for face everything and rise because first John 4 4 says greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world What that mean that mean the task that's in front of you Whatever whatever you encounter today the task that's in front of you is never greater than the power that's inside of you because it's Jesus on the inside Working on the outside. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody because Jesus is for everybody He did it for me and he can do it for you You probably wonder why my shirt inside out <laughs> because God turned my life inside out <laughs> It's no longer I that live it's Christ that live in and through me God wants you to spend time with him. God want to do a work in your life. If only you can just make time for him. Think about it like this. And I'll leave you with this right here. If you're married in a relationship or single, right? I think you can understand this regardless of what season you're in. Right? When you want to spend time with somebody and you, you go to a nice restaurant, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. And y'all sitting at the table. What's the best thing you can do? Put your phone down. And spend time with them. Make eye contact. Laugh. You know, smile. You know, talk. Ask them how's your day or whatever. The Bible says in Revelations, I believe, chapter 3, maybe verse 20. I'm not sure. You can fact check it on that. It's somewhere in there. Uh, 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 the word of God says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man answer, I will come in and sup with him. That, that, that means God is saying, that basically, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. Like open and let me in. I want to come in and sup with you. Sup means to like eat with, right? To have supper with, right? But 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 see, when when two people are sitting down eating a meal, they're not just nom, 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 nom. Uh, I'm done. I'm about to go. No, they take a bite. They're talking. God wants to talk to you. How was your day? Thank you for slowing down and talking to me. God wants a relationship with you. God wants full custody, not just weekend visits. God wants to be your priority the bible says you should have no gods before me that means many people uh can't have made things out to be counterfeit gods right they're chasing money they're chasing fame they're chasing likes on on, on social media they're chasing this they're chasing all that they they they're climbing the ladder only to realize hey bro you got your ladder leaning up against the wrong building won't you lean it up on jesus god want to spend time with you man all right and I'll leave you with this right here. So, man, I went to the eyeglass place, right? You know, to get my eyes checked, right? And see, I ain't realize I needed glasses. You know what I'm saying? I, matter of fact, I still ain't got them on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so after they did my little prescription or whatever, then they asked me to look through this thing, right? Now, I'm going to be real. When I was looking at that chart on the wall, I, you know what I'm saying? I seen H, B, E, C, what I'm like, man, it's easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now, elementary stuff. But boy, I got to that last line and look, I kept it real with him now. I ain't know if it was an E or F, but I told the people, I say, look, I'm going to tell you right now, that one is wrong, right? Because I am i don't want to guess because I just might guess right and not get the proper prescription for me. Like, I'm a good guesser. You, you get me? It was either E or F. Now, watch this. If I would have just guessed and got it right, they wouldn't have gave me my proper prescription. But I was honest with them. I don't know it all. I, I don't know it. I, I need my prescription, dog. Listen to me, I'll leave you with this. You never need to know it all. You only need to know the one who knows it all, and that's Jesus. Stop trying to figure out what only God can work out. Let me get my glasses home, and they put them things on me. Ooh, boy, I got it looking around. Hold on, that picture on the wall, red? I thought it was orange. Everything looks new. God wants to give you a new prescription today, but you got to get in his word and spend time with him so he can give you that proper revelation. I love you so much. If you made it to the end of this video, I need you to hit that like button. I need you to comment the words. I will spend time with God. Because that's right. Time spent with God is never time wasted. <laughs> Why would you not want to spend time with the one who created you and gave you your own fingerprint? Spend time with him, man. That's the best thing we can do. I love you so much. I'll see you in the next video.